Hey guys, let's take a look at camera mapping. So what is camera mapping? Well, camera mapping is a technique used to take a 2D image, usually a matte painting like the one I've created here, or it could be a video, and take that image and project that onto geometry using a camera, and then setting up a second camera to render out that scene, giving the image the appearance of having three dimensions. So let's take a look at some examples that I've created. As you can see, you get pretty cool results just from using an image. And then when you add some geometry, it makes it look even better, I think. Okay, so let's take a look at how we can set that up. Now, first of all, we need to bring in an image. And in this case, I've brought in that matte painting that I, that I created. But for this technique to work best, it's usually a really good idea to, to have as simple a foreground as possible. Because as we move through this scene, this image does stretch. So if there's any little plants and stuff, they will stretch as well. So if you keep it nice and simple, it helps out a lot. So we've got our image. Let's bring up our camera properties. Now the next step is to input the resolution of the image into our camera okay and this one's pretty simple um, 1920 by 1080 but no matter what it says up there um, if you're using a photo or something like that whatever the resolution is just punch that into the camera I'm also going to rename this camera to projection cam so this camera doesn't actually work as a camera, it just works as a projector. Okay, so you've got to keep that in mind. Once we set that up, we lock it off and we leave it alone. Okay, next step is I'm just going to place that image in our backdrop. The next step is to bring in some geometry to project the image onto. Okay, so here's one I prepared earlier. As you can see, we've just got a ground plane and a back plane simply just two polygons and subdivided you don't have to subdivide it uh, this, it, it just helps with the open gel but um, you can simply just drop in uh, some ground planes and then position them but it's a little bit easier to manage when you've got one object when it comes to scaling it up next step is to set up the surfaces now on this object I've got the back plane as a sky surface and the, and the ground as the ground surface. So let's look at, look at the surface editor. Let's start off with the sky. Okay now where it says color click on the T and we'll go and set up the projection to be front. Okay and then we'll select uh, fix projection that sort of just helps to stick the image to our geometry. Okay now with the width tiling and height tiling we'll just put that to set that to reset and we'll turn off the pixel blending okay uh, make sure that it's our projection cam okay and use texture next step is to eliminate any kind of light wave lighting or anything like that influencing our, our surfaces and our textures we basically turn the luminosity up to 100 percent and we turn the diffuse off basically set it to zero and what that does is um, gives us the full image without any lighting shadows or anything like that. Okay, so I'm just going to copy that and paste that to the ground. Forgot one of the most important things, the image. Okay. We need to select our image. And as you can see in the perspective view here, we are now projecting our matte painting onto this geometry and it's looking a little bit weird but we'll fix that up and as a result of turning off the tiling we get a perfect indication of where our image finishes so we can select our object now and we can just resize it roughly and you can see now that it's sort of like oh, hang on what's going on here this doesn't make any sense but if we go into the VPR you can see now that as we resize it so I'll just resize it roughly to fit. Okay. 
So that's our image there projected onto our geometry, but it's not looking right at the moment. We've got a few more adjustments to make, okay? Um, and the number one adjustment here is to basically set up the scale and get our ground plane um, lined up to our image, okay? A really good way to do that is to use some sort of a reference object. If we look at this image here, you can see that it's the landscape looks quite vast and this big this um, crater looks huge so what we need to do is if, if we want to drop in some 3D geometry we need to get the scale right so that things look correct I mean you're in total control here so if you really want to make something look massive and make this crater look small we can do that or if we want it to look huge we can also do that I've got a character that I created. It's just a simple guy and I know that he's exactly 180 centimeters. That's almost six foot or roughly around six foot tall. So I'm going to use him as my guide and the way we go about scaling up the scene is, is we take our projection camera and we move it about forward and back depending on how big you want your object to be. I mean for this particular scene um, I'm going to want this crater to be massive, but just for this example, we'll make our um, our guy here quite big so that we can just see it a little bit better. Okay, so from there we can uh, move the camera up and down. But one thing you'll notice is in our perspective view, we've got our sky plane that meets our ground plane. What we want to do is we want to get this our horizon line here where the sky meets the ground matching up exactly with our image and we simply select our camera and we rotate it in the pitch until we eyeball pretty much this line here on the back with our horizon but I'll show you a way to get it spot on we've got that lined up roughly now our bloke here is not quite set up so we'll bring that camera down which moves him up and you can see it looks massive compared to this crater but that's okay so we've got that set up now we've got a horizon line set up now to get a, a perfect indication as to whether we've got a horizon set up if we go to VPR and I rotate the camera if I rotate the camera you'll notice if you look just in here you can see our horizon line is way off so if we grab our camera and rotate it you'll see that it as it comes up and it meets our sky perfectly so now we know for sure that the horizon line of our image meets, meets up with the horizon line of our object here and in doing that rotation we've moved the camera a little bit so it gets a little bit fiddly but we'll bring him back up by moving the camera down and we'll just check our rotation again that's about right anyway you get the idea okay so now as far as the, the 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 geometry goes well our image fits in it perfectly we don't need to um, size it up or anything like that but here's the thing when we create our secondary camera and do our camera move whatever's closest to the camera will appear to have a lot of movement when we move the camera we don't really want to move that that um, we don't want the sky to move too much because the less it moves gives more of an appearance of having distance we can just grab our ground plane and just stretch it stretch it we can stretch it back okay now it looks like it's gone all weird but it it um, it hasn't we can just resize it again we can just keep stretching resizing and what I'm doing here is distancing that back plane from the camera so that when we do make, do the camera move, the back plane is not going to move so much. Okay, so we've got our projection cameras all set up. So let's go ahead now and create our render camera. And that's pretty simple. Basically, all we do is we select our camera and we clone it. Okay, now the first thing I want to do is well, I've got the second one selected. I want to change that to render cam. Okay. 
And then what I'm going to do, well, make sure that takes. I'm going to select our projection cam, and I'm just going to lock that off. Um, you can go one step further and just turn off all the um, rotation and position so that we don't mess with it. We've got it set up, and we're going to leave it alone. Okay, so let's now work on our render cam. Okay, so now with our image, it's 1920 by 1080. Okay, well, now let's just say you're using a 4K or even a 10K image. You obviously don't want to render out in 10K, and that's not a problem. What we can do is we just, with our render camera, we you want to constrain the proportions so that the image that you render out is not all stretched and looking all weird. Now, if it's not, um, if it doesn't fit your regular resolution, well, you can crop it in post. Keep constraint proportions on and you can just change the resolution in this case. So our image and our projection camera is set at 1920 by 1080 but our render cam is set at 720. And we can close all this off. Now that we've got our render camera set up, let's take a look at what that's all about. Grab our camera, our position and Let's just move around. So now if I move back, you can clearly see our limitations. Basically what we want to do is we want to set up our camera to be within our image here. So I'm just going to delete that key that I created and we can simply move down the timeline, grab our camera and we can just move in. And as you can see, as I'm moving in, the ground looks like it's stuck to the geometry and the camera looks as though it's moving through the scene. Now there's one other thing that you can do it allows us to move around just a little bit more within the scene and the way we do that is if we bring up our camera properties what we can do is we can mess around with our focal length okay now if we go to say let's say 35 millimeter you'll notice now that the camera hasn't moved what's actually happening is our focal length is moving adding us the appearance of moving in closer without actually moving the camera. Okay, so we can go in there and now that we've got that, that basically gives us a little bit more freedom to move around the scene as you can see. So maybe you want to start off in the middle and then scoot up to the sky because maybe something's flying across and then follow it across and there you go, you've got some sort of simple camera move um, using your own background which hopefully would be high res and get a pretty decent camera move by faking it. Okay, the next thing I want to get into is showing you how to set up the shadows and stuff but let's just say that you're not um, going to include any kind of 3D objects in your scene, okay? Say that Let's just turn this guy off. Let's just say that you want to basically render out just the background, just the camera move. You've, you've created a beautiful matte painting and you just want a little bit of a camera move. What you can do then is just render this out. Now, I want to just point out, when you render this out, you really don't need any shadows or anything like that. You don't need any lights. Um, you can turn all that stuff off and it doesn't affect our image one bit because we've got our surfaces set up to be 100% uh, luminous. So basically the image, the object itself is creating its own lighting. So you can just go ahead now and bring up your render globals, set that up, set your output. But one thing you do want to do is give it some you know, samples or anti-aliasing um, just so that the image renders out nicely, but that's about it. You don't have to include any lights or anything like that and just render it out, okay? But let's just say you do want to include some 3D and when you include 3D, you obviously need some shadows. Okay, so now we've got our guy here and obviously he looks like he's just sort of floating around. What we want to do is you want to make it look as if he's standing on this surface and casting his shadow. First thing you think of, it's the first thing that I thought of, is let's go ahead and create a shadow catcher. Seems like the obvious choice, well it was for me, and bingo, we get a shadow 
with the lighting it's really important to try to replicate what's happening in the image now it's not there's no real massive indications of shadows in this image but we know the sun's in this right corner and there's a tiny little bit of a shadow here so the lights traveling in this direction so it's really important to match up the lighting from our image with the lighting of our um, scene so I'm just going to rotate the light so that it, now it's pointing in the same direction okay we've got that set up and it's the sun's quite low so we can you know stretch out or play with the pitch of it and stretch out our lighting let's start moving through the scene now it's quite weird that our object and shadow is moving but our ground isn't the reason for that is is that we can't use the shadow catcher unfortunately because it doesn't work with the front projection okay so we've got to turn that off how do we get our shadow back since our ground now is 100% luminous and, and zero diffuse which basically means there's no shadows what we're going to have to do is we're going to basically have to drop that down and set up our diffuse to 100% but instantly you see that the ground now is really really dark well we can we can fix that up by just increasing our, our luminosity okay until we get back to the original image okay so that's one way of, of setting up the shadow now this is the way you would do it if you're not using global illumination but if you're using global illumination if we turn that on I've just got the base set up we're not completely done one last step is if we go over to backdrop and add environment image world and rather than going in and grabbing an HDRI you can do that if you've got one that's similar to the scene I'm just simply going to select the same background image use that because I know it's going to be perfect once again we need to decrease our luminosity because now that we've got the global illumination and our backdrop that's leveling out the whole scene now if we move through with our camera you'll notice that everything is working correctly okay the grounds moving shadows and we've got our global illumination and we're ready to go so basically from here you could go ahead and you could just render this out or you could do what I normally do our surface editor for the ground basically go in and turn that off and I'll do the same for the sky just turn that off now we don't have any images projected basically we just make that black let's do that to both and make sure that we've got zero luminous luminosity and 100% diffuse and we change that to shadow density for both of them and we've basically turned our background our ground and our sky planes into shadow catches but now if we do a render we can check out alpha and now we've got our 3d object with our shadow without any background we can render out the background separately and our 3d objects separately and composite them in post so we're done now however the scene doesn't look right because the shadow suggests that our character is standing on a flat surface what we want is this result where the shadow follows the shape of our image what I did was I created another object another background object and took the original subdivided it and then modeled a crater saved that out and brought that object in and set up my scene according to this object now let's take a look at a matte painting with objects in the foreground and how we would deal with setting that up now what I've done is, is I've split this image up into three well more than three but three main um, images we've got our background which will be projected onto our background or sky um, object we've got our final matte painting which will be projected on pretty much every object and we've got our city image which will be projected on a, a plane just for the city what also I've done I've created some 
masks. I've masked out the individual pyramids and created a mask for each one of them as well as for the city. So let's have a look at it in Lightwave. Well, here we are in Lightwave, and if I grab the render camera, if I move through the scene, you can see that we've got a nice camera move. So this is how the scene is set up. If I just turn VPR off, what I've got is I've got a bunch of planes that I've created and I've subdivided them more so for the OpenGL and for you guys to be able to see what's going on. Gives you a better idea. I've set it up so that the camera is projecting the image, our main image, onto each one of these objects and the reason I've created them as separate objects is so that I can place my separate masks for each one of the objects. Now don't think of the mask as being um, on this actual object itself. I'm working with the object. Think of the mask as being um, projected from the front of the lens just as, just as the image is. Let's have a look at the surfacing. Basically what I've set up is front projection for the image and then under transparency I've used the mask with the same setup. What I've done is I've isolated one of the pyramids and I just want to show you how these masks and how these projections work. Now say that we wanted this actual pyramid to move a lot less with our camera move what we want to do is, is that we want to let's go forward we want to move it back what you'll notice as I move it back and I've got a keyframe in here so I can delete it so don't worry about that but as I move it back you can see that the image is getting chopped off yet the actual mask itself is still perfectly masking out our pyramid so what we need to simply do is just rescale our image and it's all set up perfectly again okay so now if the object is too close you can move it back but when you move it back just make sure that you scale it up and scale it up enough so that you're not cutting off any of the image okay so that's how this scene was set up we've got our basic objects and let's have a look at those what I've got is I've just got a whole stack of simple planes that are subdivided that are all named separately so that I can put separate surface on them separate masks just makes things easier and gives me the ability to move them around in the scene and I've got all that set up as well as the sky and I just brought that in and positioned it to how I wanted things to move or not move or to to um, basically get the right sort of shift we don't want the city too close so that it moves way too much making it look weird so you just spread it out how you think it might work and you can go in and adjust it and then once you're done you come in and as you move around it works perfectly and hence the reason for the the sky background being a separate image without any of the pyramids in the foreground so that when we do our move and the pyramids move they're not revealing any of the um, image from the original so that's how we set up a scene using geometry for our foreground objects let's take it to the next step now in this scene as you can see I've got a whole stack of new objects in the scene what I've done is, is I've gone ahead and I've created some actual objects that loose, loosely represent what's happening in the image if we have a look here in modeler I've just created a bunch of pyramids and they're all pretty much the same size the scale really doesn't matter in here because we manipulate that in layout and then I've created the three front um, little pyramids okay I've brought them in and I've placed them in the scene however this time we're projecting the images and the masks onto actual 3D geometry as opposed to a flat plane like our cities in the background and then what I've done is, is I've just gone in and added a whole bunch of my own little objects uh, helicopters and stuff to fill out the scene 
and what I did was I just rendered out all the 3D objects separately rendered out the background separately and composited them together and added a bunch of effects but that's the way that you do it to get an even more accurate um, representation now the reason you would do something like this is that as this helicopter here is passing over this pyramid it's going to cast a shadow if we look at this example of the final render as I go through it you can see here that the shadows from these helicopters are actually passing over the geometry making it look as if the helicopters are really there and that's why you'd want to add some real geometry it can be simple but if it's real it adds to the realism in terms of the shadows one last thing I want to show you is how we can do some modeling here in layout to just add some dimension to, to these planes and the way we do that is we've got our object selected and if we go to properties and we go into effects we had cloth effects and we simply hit calculate once that's done we go into our cloth effects go to our edit effects and if we select our edit tool now we can go in there and we can start moving points around as you would in modeler and basically just keep going around and keep making the changes you'd probably use this if you wanted to just create some bumps and stuff in on a terrain or something like that or maybe you're trying to um, line up a box with a building a side of a building or something but once you've made your changes you get out of that tool by hitting a spacebar and what you can do now is, is you can either save this object as a transformed object and bring it back in or just simply go to file and save motion save that motion and what it does is it loads it in and disables all the rest of the settings and you're good to go with the rest of your animating now I just want to point out say you've got another plane that you want to do this exact same thing to what I found is that I'm not sure if it does the same once you've saved and loaded the motion but if you haven't and you want to go ahead and manipulate another plane and you want to calculate that just make sure that you turn this one off the one that you've worked on previously go and do your other one and then once you're done just turn them all back on and continue on with your scene so that's just one way of doing some basic modeling here in layout um, just to add some dimension to these otherwise very straight and flat planes another great way actually it's a brilliant way to pretty much get camera information and be able to create some simple geometry for an image now here's the image you may have seen it in my example with that war scene I took this image and what you do is you set up the perspective and this system sort of only really works with images that that work with two-point perspective such as this building most buildings and stuff like that work really well where you can line up your audio coordinates and all the rest of it and set up all the perspective but once you're done you can go in there and, and create geometry you can just create some simple planes and um, and you'll, you'll export the perfect camera information so it's all set up perfectly with all your focal lengths and all the rest of it but what you need to do is, is you need to grab a couple of free plugins and put them in, in um, the plugins folder of SketchUp which is also free and um, then what you can do is once you're done export your lightwave scene or export a lightwave object um, so if you want to know more about that check out this video here on YouTube by this guy here Ian Thompson he goes into great detail it's a three part video goes into great detail about um, getting the plugins and how to, how to use SketchUp and, and how to export it all for Lightwave and set it up in Lightwave so I highly recommend you check this out just to give you another way to to create some geometry and get some uh, information from some photos or images so I hope it's helped I'll see you next time.